This is a, a moment I never saw in my life. It's hard to believe what we're seeing right there. They're just walking through mirror Capitol Police. President Trump could stop this with one tweet, but instead he's on Twitter attacking Vice President Pence for refusing to go along with his attempt at a coup, at a bloodless coup. We hope it stays bloodless. Uh, and you have protesters accosting senators. You have people, uh, members of Congress, being evacuated because of bomb threats. And again, President Trump, if he wanted to, and there is really no reason to think he wants to, he could stop this. He could stop it with one tweet, and he will not because, frankly, he likes this. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. Hey, Hooligan, I'm Sam. Welcome back for more Dick Jokes for Justice. Have your friends or family recently said, I don't know how this could happen. There was a coup in America? You're not alone. A lot of us were caught off guard on January 6, 2021, when fascists stormed the U.S. Capitol to try and overthrow our, well, it's barely a democracy, but that's a story for another time. The point is the 2020 election was fairly and properly decided by the voters. And you can easily tell the voters decided it because President Joe Biden already has higher job approval polling than President Flagfucker had in his entire four years. But not everyone was surprised by the coup. No, 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 no. You know who wasn't surprised? Anti-fascists. That's right, the dreaded Antifa predicted the MAGA coup months in advance. Losing the election, of course, hurt a lot of fascist feelings because they're the chosen people. And what do fascists do when the people don't choose their dear leader? That's when fascists try to overthrow the people's government with a coup. Just like Hitler's beer hall putsch, 10 years before he became chancellor of Germany. Hey, that was a while before the Holocaust. You know, that might be an ominous portent for us if we hadn't already defeated fascism with this recent election. What's that? There are still fascists in America? No, get out. No, seriously, we should get them out of elected office. Hmm, fascists could be a problem. Maybe somebody should do something about them. Maybe we should do something about them. I wonder if anyone else has ever dealt with a fascism problem before. You know, maybe we could learn something from, I don't know, let's say history? What's that you say? Umberto Eco wrote the seminal work on identifying fascism. It's called Ur Fascism and there's a convenient synopsis on Wikipedia? That's right, in this series, I'm exploring Umberto Eco's Ur Fascism. Because let's face it, all of your friends and family who were surprised by the coup, well, they still don't know how to spot a Nazi, and that's a problem. Specifically, that's a problem because Nazis are kind of hard to spot. 20 years in the Marine Corps, how could I possibly be a Nazi? How could I be a fascist? And how could I be a fascist? It's I'm by myself. Yes, it's true. There are a handful of obvious Nazis who walk around with big swastika tattoos and honestly, fuck those guys. But they're not the larger problem because most Nazis know not to be that obvious. Like if they fuck chickens, they probably wouldn't want anybody to know they fuck chickens, so they keep a lid on it. That's why Hitler didn't campaign on a promise to murder Jews because nobody votes for the let's do genocide party. The right is going to pick a fascist within 10 to 20 years because right. they're not going That's to right. be the only, one, the only ones on the outs. There's 60, 70 million of us. Very few people vote for the let's do genocide party. That's so well put and you're absolutely right. I don't think we can say that enough. I'm so glad that you just said it. Not many people will vote for the let's do genocide party. But moreover, people can't be neatly divided between fascists and non-fascists. People hold beliefs that may be more or less fascist, and you can check your own fascist tendencies with the F-scale test created by Theodore Adorno. So most Nazis don't show up with big swastikas or chickens. They show up as friends who just want to help, who just want to restore your nation to its former glory, who just want to make your country great again. And that simple idea spreads and evolves, kind of like a virus like a chicken fucking virus. 
until eventually there you are, either committing or at least complicit in a genocide that you never saw coming. And posting Foghorn Leghorn thirst traps to Instagram. That's what I want to prevent. The genocide. We can think of Umberto Eco's Ur fascism like a chicken fucking scale. 14 points to help us identify the warning signs of fascism and figure out how far the chicken fucking virus is spread. <laughs> so when we see people displaying fascist tendencies, we can get in touch with organizations like Life After Hate, doing the hard work of de-radicalizing them. So the next time your friend or family member says, how did this happen? A coup in America? Point them over to this series, and maybe we can learn from the history of the Beer Hall Putsch. And maybe you won't have to suffer the indignity of walking in on them in the hen house with their pants down. I said certified free, seven days a week, wet ass cloaca. The rejection of modernism, which views the rationalistic development of Western culture since the Enlightenment as a descent into depravity. This isn't like technological development, it's cultural shift, like when Paul Joseph Watson calls twerking the decay of Western civilization. This episode's been a bit harder to make because the arguments here are a little more abstract. When Echo talked about fascists opposing modernism, he framed that specifically as opposing the ideals of the Enlightenment. The pursuit of happiness, science, liberty, progress, toleration, constitutional government, and separation of church and state. And while I have been able to find some of that in my research, the iron law of politics, democracy is cringe. It's 2020, monarchists are back, baby, let's go. I would argue that it's not really necessary to go that far. Fascism being obsessed with returning to traditional ways in order to restore a former greatness, as was described in the previous episode, Often enough, you can see that they reject anything that they see as just happening to be a deviation from the past, like modern art. And as Echo pointed out, fascists often tout their technical prowess as one of the advantages of the fascist state. But while they say that, it's not really true, because it's kind of hard to achieve real technological advancement when you reject science. Welcome to the age of degeneracy. We got gay marriage wrong as a nation even though it's got high approval ratings. I am always on the hunt for more signs of the fall of modern civilization. We literally can't tell you what the name of the song is. The backlash to Cardi B and Megan and Thee Stallion's WAP proves society still hates sexually powerful women. Hmm. It's 2020, monarchists are back, baby. Let's go. And just to be clear, when I say like unironic monarchists, I don't just mean like someone who has a Union Jack tablecloth and you know maybe a mug with the Queen's face on it, I don't know. I mean someone who unironically wants power to be returned to the monarchy in a significant sense, you know, to, to, to reclaim this, you know, obedience to kings, as, as you see right here. Fuentes believes that the state should be used to force society to conform to his moral standards. The law is the instructor. The law must come in, you know, enough of this libertarian, individualist, constitutional crap. We need the state to go in there and force the society to be the way we want it to be. The iron law of politics, democracy is cringe. Anybody who is defending or advocating for democracy after this year is either politically retarded or is acting maliciously. People are fundamentally sheep. The vast majority of people very simply lack agency. And our problem is that the people running our society use propaganda and mass mainstream media as an extension of their own power structures to keep people in line. But because they can vote, well, it's supposedly a free society, they'll brainwash you into what you're supposed to be thinking but since you ultimately get to pull the lever it's a just and free society right doesn't really take into account our last election but still detailing uh, you know their their uh, complete abandonment of democracy liberty hangout you know i'd rather live under a catholic monarchy than a liberal democracy master after master from leonardo to rembrandt to bierstadt produced works that inspired uplifted and deepened us the profound, the inspiring, and the beautiful were replaced by the new, the different, and the ugly. Today, the silly, the pointless, and the purely offensive are held up as the best of modern art. Honey, a ginger, you can call another ginger, ginger, sing it! This is where the concept of degenerate art becomes important. Nazis started using it to alienate modern artists, especially expressionists. It was used to make Germany hostile to them. Watson is very concerned with art. He's spoken a few times about the degeneracy of modern art, how it paves the way for civilization's decline. Conceptual art is shit. 
It doesn't enrich our culture. It degrades and cheapens society by exalting the vulgar, the crass, and the scatologic. The left tricked us with gay marriage. It turns out it was just trying to de-justify Catholicism and Christianity in general. Deeply saddened by the news of the Bob Badoff becoming a Republican in 2021, this is a move against the Crown, uh, whilst be it bearing the consent of Her Majesty is inherently treasonous. I mean, who talks about treason in 2020? And the contrary to the Christian principle of obedience to King, well, that, that's a loaded statement. Um, and republicanism is sin, apparently. So, um, that's amazing, and I absolutely love it. The new cartoon put out by Netflix. This is a Korean spa where all women can feel comfortable in the news. Still, I think I'd prefer to keep my robe. Oh, I was not ready for this, and now I'm fine. What can only be described is two fried eggs hanging on a nail and a bush that would make a 70s porn star blush. Now, the idea of this uh, cartoon for kids, uh, I don't know really what the target demographic is. When my daughter gets jailed for dealing drugs to pansexual college kids at a gay pride parade because she couldn't afford her third abortion, at least I'll still have my rugged individualism. TJ Roberts. TJ Roberts is the former managing editor of Liberty Hangout and vice president of Liberty Institution of Freedom and Economics. In It's Time to Admit MLK Jr. Really Sucked, Roberts even goes so far as to attack the civil rights leader. TJ is also the author of Physical Removal is Essential to Liberty, a defense of Austrian anarcho-capitalist theorist Hans Hermann Hoppe's controversial position that libertarian societies need to physically expel all advocates of democracy, communism, and homosexuality in order to be healthy. Hop is the founder of Property and Freedom Society, whose conferences frequently feature talks by white supremacists such as Jared Taylor, Richard Spencer, and VDARE President Peter Brimlow. In his own work, Hop has cited white supremacist Jean Philip Rushton to argue the comparisons between Western monarchies and African democracies cannot be compared due to the differences between Negroids and Caucasians. Hop has similarly asserted that his students at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, that gay people have worse foresight and financial planning than straight people. This guy's a teacher? It's part of an exhibit called Degenerate Art on display until September at the Neue Gallery in New York that offers a new look at the assault on modern art by the Nazis. The exhibit juxtaposes the classical 19th century paintings and sculptures that Hitler loved and accepted with the abstract modern art that he hated. This art he labeled degenerate. Apparently, according to Billboard, Christina Aguilera is feeling some type of way about Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion's WAP. This is a deeply important piece of art. I... We're not being prudish here. This is not James Brown being sexually suggestive on stage. Still maintained elements of disciplined design and execution. But with each new generation, standards declined until there were no standards. All that was left was wet ass P word. Royalists do not crave tyranny. Rather, they are those who recognize the legitimacy of the king over country as father over family. What? In 1937, the Nazi state seized over 15,000 artworks considered to be degenerate. The Nazis decided with this newly acquired art to make a show of degenerate art in the 1930s in an attempt to shame artists and convince Germans of the art's perverse nature. 650 artworks were selected and exposed to be laughed at and ridiculed. This is, this is empowering stuff, guys. This is like Susan B. Anthony. This is like women fighting for the right to vote. This right here is women fighting for the right to work. And ask yourself above all, and ask it more than once, what is this doing to our kids? The people pushing it clearly are trying to hurt your children. Your kids are being re-educated by predatory drag queens about non-binary genders, snorting ketamine and twerking. Promo, pornmo, uh, ad by Netflix remains on YouTube. You'll find that their argument is typically limited to sexualizing this type of thing, which is what they clearly do. Uh, it's not my critique at all. My critique at all is, my critique is simply who is this show for? The fact that you have a colorful mascot singing this woman power song uh, is obviously for little kids and also apparently pedos as well. Oh, the quartering jumped in on it too. Don't you know? If you twerk, you carry venereal diseases. Rightful King of France, Jean Comte de Paris, uh, has had to take his family out of their home and drove. Oh no. 
Oh no. See, when someone asks me what are the biggest political problems of this age, I always say it's the French monarch being oppressed. You know, it's not Black Lives Matter, it's not, you know, economic inequality. It's I simply point to the artistic results produced by universal standards compared to what is produced by relativism. The former gave the world the birth of Venus and the dying Gaul, while the latter has given us the Holy Virgin Mary, fashioned with cow dung and pornographic images, and Petra, the prize-winning sculpture of a policewoman squatting and urinating. This exhibition was displayed next to the Great Exhibition of German Art, which consisted of artworks that the Nazis approved of. This way, the visitors of both exhibitions could compare the good and the bad art. Some artworks were hanged crooked, some weren't even framed. The rooms were too small, and some slogans were written on the walls, such as nature is seen by sick minds, or madness becomes method. It wouldn't be the first time Watson tried to make some random piece of media his two-minute hate. The art world presents us with 90 tin cans filled with feces and demands that we treat it with reverence. Can you pause it for one second? What he just said, is the most immoral thing you could possibly say. <laughs> imagine all the people living for today. That's basically what we have. Okay, imagine all the people living for today means you don't plan for the future. It means you don't care about your kids. It means you don't care what happens tomorrow. This song is so unsexy that it frankly sounds like somebody describing what amounts to a serious condition that requires the care of a doctor. So, fortunately I know a doctor, who is my wife, and so I asked her for her medical diagnosis. Like, imagine being this literal and picky about art. The exhibit also explores how the Nazis' separating out of unacceptable artwork was used as a justification for their plan to purify German society of Jews. You have two photographs, one showing the line outside the Generate Art exhibition, and on the other side showing a train full of Jews arriving at Auschwitz. Your kids should not be all uh, fat and gross when they're in elementary or middle school. It would require that new federal buildings be made in a classical style, similar to the White House or Capitol Hill. So you find this act dictatorial then? Yes, absolutely. Hitler and Stalin have pulled the same situation back in the day. Reactionaries are neither evil radicals nor scared nostalgists, but simply those who see in the past a beauty that must be reclaimed and with a... <laughs> A black and white photo of some old country houses, superimposed white, um, black typewriter text. We have to go back. I love it. Whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. Hold up. I said certified freak seven days a week. Wet ass P word. Make that pull out game weak. Yeah, you effin' with some wet ass P word. P word is female genitalia. This is pushed by rich people, powerful people, in order to degrade and destroy our culture. The museum heads, gallery owners, and the critics who encourage and financially enable the production of this rubbish. It is they who champion graffiti and call it genius, promote the scatological and call it meaningful. It is they who, in reality, are the naked emperors of art. Royalism is so prominent in Christian psyche that the image of the legitimate king is the natural method by which Saint, I can't read that word, illustrates the victory of Christ over death, the tool of the usurping dictator of the earth, the Satan. We moved the capital of Israel to Jerusalem. That's for the evangelicals. The evangelicals are more excited about that than Jewish people. Hashtag Christian royalism. So now we're getting a bit more into Christian royalism. So it's not just royalism, it's specifically a Christian brand of it. It's almost tough to describe this as boot licking. I think the serfs tweeted this and they described it as crown licking, which I guess almost sounds a little bit better, but it is the ultimate form of boot licking. Now the title comes from the New Testament book sure. of John, but instead of having Jesus as a messianic figure, we have Adolf Hitler. They may have power to bruise his heel, but he will have the power to crush their head. It is not just like, oh, you know, people that are in charge are doing a good job. No. This is bootlicking to its highest extent. This is bootlicking of the monarch. Bootlicking of, of the definitely God-ordained person to rule over you. To say no to President Trump would be saying no to God. He, like King Cyrus before him, fulfilled the biblical prophecy of the gods worshipped by Jews Christians, and yes, Muslims. The Nazis wanted to kill degenerate artists, not by executing them, but by revoking their titles, by convincing the public that they weren't artists. 
it's not actually a form of music. It's a, it's a form of rhythmic speaking. It's like they always have this justification for it, but you can have this message without being a degenerate. How about you just don't have everyone completely nude dancing around? If this is a children's show, uh, which it clearly is. This is pushed by rich people, powerful people, in order to degrade and destroy our culture. And I never thought I would use this word on TV because it's such a 1950s blue nose cliche, but this is filth, it actually is filth. And if you don't believe it, look it up and you'll see. So the moral of the story is we're going to continue being normal because that's a revolutionary act. I'm a huge fan of Frog <laughs> If you'd like to help support this work, if you think it's important, in addition to just sharing it with friends and family, you can also throw me a buck or two on Patreon. The link is down below. And here's the list of the current patrons that helped make this possible. I'm Sam. Stay safe. I love you, and I'll see you next time.